Will you walk the lonely earth with me? All through the briar and brambles. I'll be your treasure. Beautiful lyrics from a song by Johnny Flynn, who wrote the Detectorists theme track. A beautiful song with absolutely beautiful lyrics, very spiritual lyrics if you listen deeply enough. Anyway, you know what it is, back with another dose of that spiritual bleach. High strength spiritual bleach to help burn through those spiritual blockages, those sticky, deep, dark impediments to the spiritual path. If you are on the path of awakening, you are on the path of enlightening, you are on a spiritual journey, you are engaged in your spiritual practice and yet you keep coming across just barriers on the path. They may have been persisting for some time. You may have had some massive, huge glimpses that can show you have had these huge awakening moments, these big insights into the true nature, some real powerful and profound divine awakening moments that have led to an incredible change in perspective, a total shift in the way that you're observing the world, that you're approaching life, changing the entire methodology by which you live your life. And then at some point, you feel like this, this huge enlightening experience somehow became a little endarkened, or you felt this progress slowed and then perhaps even came to a halt. So I'd like to address some of these common sticking points that people find because they are so common. If you have encountered these barriers, you can rest assured that every spiritual seeker who ever engaged on this journey will have encountered these exact same barriers. One of the most important things to recognize is that these barriers are not a, a sort of a real thing as such. It's not like there's a dark energy that's blocking your path. There's not a dark energy within you or a dark energy outside. There's nothing actually happening as such. It tends to just be some background residual belief that we are holding, sometimes unconsciously, because that's how these beliefs kind of continue to operate. They work in the shadows. And some of these beliefs survived. They survived. These shadows somehow managed to run and hide and managed to evade and escape your initial awakening experience. And today's today's spiritual blockage that we're addressing is to do with how to see the illusion clearly, how to truly see the illusion, see through the illusion, and how to truly experience what is meant by awakening from this dream. So if you've been spiritually seeking for a while, you've probably come across the concept. Is it a concept? You've probably come across the pointing, the teaching, that everything we see, your entire life and the entire universe, is actually an illusory reality. It is a dream reality, and this is often referred to as the Maya in the Hindu tradition. M-A-I-A -A or M-A-Y-A, -A. it's translated differently, but Maya means the illusion, the illusion. And you may have come across this pointing and this understanding as a method of awakening. This is why we call it awakening, right? Because we're awakening from the dreamed state. We're awakening from the dreamed reality. So as a solution to our suffering and as a direct path towards waking up to the truth of the universe, many traditions and practices speak of recognize the illusion, recognize that everything, your entire life and the entire universe was actually a, a dreamed reality. And you may have come across this 
and may even have come to a recognition and an understanding and saying, ah, I kind of get that. That actually makes a lot of sense. I mean, in the, in the modern world, we sometimes talk about the matrix, and this has become very prevalent in, in recent times. It has become very common to refer to things as the matrix and say, how do we wake up from the matrix? But this is often referring to our sort of socio-political structure and our cultural structure. And it's not referring to reality itself, but I mean, that film, The Matrix, actually, actually explains things very, uh, very well, very, very well. And uh, you know that scene where he says he's holding up the spoon, the child, the, the awakened, enlightened child is holding up the spoon and bending it. And Neo asks, how do you do that? And he says, don't try to bend the spoon, simply recognize the truth. And Neo says, what truth? And the child says, there is no spoon. And upon that, the spoon starts to bend. It's just upon recognizing the reality of the situation, and that's what creates the power that the child and Neo both gain access to. So, maybe you have come across this understanding that there's something else going on here, and this is an illusory reality, the Maya, the Matrix, and maybe you're getting on board with that, and maybe had some experiences where you directly experience this, where your consciousness elevates into the awakened state, and in that conscious awakened state, you feel total inner peace, total serenity, total bliss, because Consciousness is that which is observing the illusory reality. And your consciousness is observing everything. And you can reside within that consciousness state, not involved with the content of the illusion, but instead abiding purely as the consciousness that witnesses the illusion. Maybe you have had some of those experiences. Maybe you have spent quite a bit of time in those experiences. Samadhi, that, that sort of blissful, awakened state. But then sadly, sadly, there is some kind of hook that draws you back in. There is something that plugs you, <laughs> plugs you right back into the matrix. You thought you'd escaped. You thought you'd got out of all this. And then maybe some years have gone by and you go, hang on a minute, wait a minute. I thought I was free from this. I thought I'd awakened from the illusion. And then you realized you've been hooked back in. Dang. <laughs> they gone done got you again, didn't they? Those Agent Smiths that are out there. And that's how, that's how it happens. It's very subtle sometimes. It's just the subtlety of the things that draw you back in, that pull you back into the illusory reality. You were abiding in the pure conscious state, but then you know, the, the devil lays temptations everywhere. That's what's meant by that. There's just something that tempts you back in. And it's, it's infinite, the number of ways that the illusion can pull you back in to engaging with and identifying with the illusory reality and coming to believe that it's real. That's the, that's the root. That is the cause of all of the hooks, although those hooks that pull you back into the illusory reality and believe it's real are infinite, they all have the same, the same root cause. It's the belief and the identification with the illusion believing that it's real. So, let's remove all of that. Let's remove the root cause of all the hooks that bring you back into the illusory reality. Let's just eradicate the hook. And we're going to do that by learning how to see through the illusion and understanding exactly what's happening here and the mechanism by which you are fooled into believing it's real. Now, let's begin by understanding the nature of an illusion. An illusion can only exist if you believe in it. So, 
to give an example there, to illustrate that, imagine an illusionist on the stage and he's about to perform the great trick of sawing a woman in half. It's a classic trick. It's, uh, it's, it's been done many, many different times and it's the classic archetypal illusion of sawing the woman in half. Now, it's only an illusion if you don't know how the trick is performed. If the illusionist comes on stage and just does the trick, and you can see he puts the woman in the box, saws the box in half, but then can pull the box apart, and you can see she's in two halves, and the box can... but she's fine. You can see a leg sticking out of that box over there, and see a head sticking out of that box over there, and you're like, how on earth has he done that? That is the illusion, because you're baffled. You don't know how that trick is performed, and so you believe what you're seeing, and you're like, oh, whoa! And the more invested, and the more engaged you are in the trick, the more you believe that it's real. If you're invested in what's happening, when he starts to saw the box in half, you might go, oh no, is she gonna be? She might even start screaming to, <laughs> to really sell the illusion, right? That's how, that's how the Maya does it. That's how the Maya does it. It might even start screaming. When it starts screaming, then you are really invested. You think something's gone wrong. When he's sawing the woman in half and she starts screaming, you think, oh, the trick's gone wrong. That's sometimes how they do it. So they get you hooked and invested in the illusion and they really sell this. And that's an illusion can only exist because you are invested. The illusion only exists if you are believing in what's happening on stage. Now, this is crucial to understand. If the illusionist came on stage and ran through in great detail exactly the mechanism by which the trick works, and says, actually, this is actually two separate boxes to begin with. There's two women here. There's one in this first box and there's one in the second box. In the first one, her head's sticking out. And in the second box, the second lady, her legs are sticking out. So there were actually two women the entire time. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pretend to saw through the middle, but what I'm actually sawing through is two separate boxes. And then we're gonna pretend that I'm sawing through one woman and then we're going to pull that box to that side and that to that side. So uh, watch this. And then he performs the, what he's doing on stage. Because you know exactly how the trick is performed, it's no longer an illusion. What it is, is a demonstration of something happening. That's all. But because nobody in that audience would be invested they haven't suspended their disbelief and nobody is believing in what's happening on stage because you know how the trick is performed. There is no longer an illusion. You're starting to, you're starting to, to get where I'm going with this. The illusion can only persist provided you believe in and you are invested in believing in the illusion. You don't know how the trick is performed. You give permission to the illusionist to fool you. That is how the, the Maya and the Matrix operates. That is the plug <laughs> that the Matrix plugs into the back of your head, right? It's your investment in believing the illusion. You gave permission to become lost and invested in, granted, a very convincing illusion. The most convincing illusion of all. The illusion of illusions is the whole thing. Reality itself. All of it. The whole thing. So that was the example of the illusionist on the stage. But how do we extrapolate that to include all of reality? Because here is the spiritual blockage. This is the spiritual blockage right here. How can this all be an illusion when it feels so real. It is so obvious. It is so clear. It is so... I mean, you can feel it. It's not only you can see it. It's not only that you can hear it, touch it, smell it, and taste it. Your thoughts are within it. Your feelings, your emotions, your memories, your predictions about the future, how you feel about the present. 
it all feels so very, very real. Now, granted, this is going to be a... nuanced, <laughs> nuanced thing to understand. Primarily because our entire world culture is invested in the illusion, right? This is why you were conditioned so powerfully. This is why they invested so much in conditioning you into believing the illusion, because everyone else is buying it, you know? Nobody in the audience wants somebody to stand out and point out how the trick is done. Because if somebody stands up and points out how the trick is done, it ruins it for the entire audience, right? So, spoiler alert. <laughs> Should have said that at the start, shouldn't I? Spoiler alert, I'm about to spoil the ending of the entire universe. So, if you don't want spoilers, click off now. If you don't want spoilers to how the, un the trick of the universe is, then turn off now, alright? Maybe I'll put a spoiler warning in the title or something. I'm about to reveal the trick. So it's only difficult to understand because you've been so powerfully convinced that, it, that it's impossible to wake up from the illusion. Because the moment you start waking up from the illusion, everybody says, no, 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 that's not right, that's not right, don't wake up, because they don't want the, the ending spoiled, essentially. So here is how we are going to come to a deeper place of understanding. Consider the rainbow one of nature's most beautiful natural phenomena, If not the most beautiful of natural phenomena, the rainbow. And you would be very hard pressed to find somebody who doesn't appreciate the beauty of a rainbow. Everybody looks upon a rainbow and goes, wow, wow. How amazing, how beautiful, how marvellous. I mean, they're just breathtaking. So consider it, really, let's, let's, can you remember the most beautiful rainbow you ever saw? Let's really evoke that now. Bring that to mind, bring that into your entire being. The, the image of the rainbow in the sky. Can you remember the first one you ever saw as a child and you were just like, whoa. You know, at school, you might look out the window, see a rainbow, point it out to the teacher and everybody runs over to the window, including the teacher, to look out the window and gaze upon this beautiful, beautiful rainbow. Now most people would probably just look at the rainbow and say, yes, it's beautiful and understand it's something to do with the light, it's something to do with that, it's something that happens after it rains or something along those lines. If you're particularly scientifically minded, you will understand that it's the, the light of the sun being refracted through the moisture, the water vapour in the air, and it's the refraction of the light through the water vapour that is picked up by our eyes that produces the image of the multiple, it's the entire light spectrum essentially, it is the entire spectrum of light that is reflect, refracted and split apart by the water vapour. Essentially, the veil of water vapour in the air is acting as a prism, and this prism breaks the light apart into its entire spectrum and becomes the visible chromatic spectrum of colours that make up pure light. So essentially, light is all of the colours together, essentially all of the colours of light together. That's what creates pure white light, essentially. You mix all the colours together, you get white. So, if you're fairly scientifically minded, that's, that's the, the explanation and the understanding. If you're spiritually minded or religiously minded, you might have another explanation for why the rainbow appears. But we're going to use the scientific explanation of the rainbow to fully understand the nature of an illusion and to fully understand the way in which the universe has tricked you into believing that it's a real solid tangible thing and you and why you overlook the fact 
that the entire universe and your entire lived experience is actually just happening in your mind and consciousness is observing what is happening. I say in your mind, I mean in your experience and consciousness is observing your experience but consciousness is essentially observing an illusion. So what is a rainbow really? When you look in the sky and see a rainbow up there you would be absolutely forgiven for saying yes there is a rainbow in the sky because that's what you can see that's how it appears it appears that there is a rainbow in the sky allowing the breeze to pass a moment and also taking a breath I'm very aware that I've been talking constantly for a little while now so just taking a breath let's reset recenter refocus fully into the present moment here this is Zen in the field I suddenly became aware that I am getting a little lost in my thought stream here and I need to rein things back in fully here the presence of being so that I can regain my composure and deliver this pointing effectively. That's why I'm pausing here. I would invite you to do the same, just reset, recenter, refocus, fully here, fully now, just this present moment. Stay with me because the pointing, the teaching requires two things, the teacher and the student, both to be engaged, both to be clear-headed, present and both to be in flow state. So, you would be forgiven for thinking. If you looked into the sky and you see the rainbow, you would think there is a rainbow in the sky. But let's just examine that a little closer. Is there a rainbow in the sky? Well, you can see a light phenomena that appears to be in the sky, absolutely. But if you were to fly a plane up there, you would find that there's nothing there. There's not even the appearance of a light phenomena there. This is why we have the phenomena of when you move towards the rainbow, the rainbow keeps moving away from you. It's partly why they say, you know, there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, if only you could get to the end of the rainbow. But you can't do it. The closer you get to the rainbow, the more it pulls away. Now, this tells us something. This gives us a clue. As we look up into the sky and see the rainbow, so it's not in the sky, is it? Because if, if somebody went up there, they would find there's nothing there. So it can't be in the sky. It is appearing to be in the sky. So let's go then, if it's not in the sky, where is it? Where is the rainbow? Now that we have understood that it's definitely not in the sky, if you move towards it, it just keeps moving away from you. The location you can see it in, if viewed from a different angle, they would not see a rainbow because it's to do with angles as well. So it's not existing somewhere else. It's not existing in the sky. And it's, there are many, many other people who cannot see it. So where is the rainbow? Where is it? It's not up there. Where is it? The reason I'm not giving the answer straight away is because it's always better if the student um, if the student arrives at the conclusion naturally themselves. So that's why I don't always give the answer straight away and keep repeating the question, but I know it aggravates some people. <laughs> but where is the rainbow? You can see it. I'm not denying that you can see it. You absolutely can see a rainbow. But where is it? After some exploration, we find it must be, we could say it's in our eyes, we could say it's in the light, 
but ultimately we come to, well, it's happening in my perception. You could say it's happening in my brain or it's happening in my mind, but ultimately even that, we have to kind of pick that apart and say, but actually all I can be sure of is that it is happening in my perception. So, this is just beginning to understand the nature of an illusion. This is the nature of how illusions operate. To all appearances, it appears a rainbow is appearing in the sky, but upon exploration and investigation, we find the rainbow is happening within our experience. The rainbow is being created by several elements all coming together. So here are the three, the three factors that must be present in order for us to experience a rainbow, the phenomena of a rainbow. We need the light, we need the water vapour in the air, and we need our eyes. We have to have eyes that are capable of perceiving the colour spectrum. If you remove any one of those elements, if you remove any single one of those factors, the rainbow disappears. This is logical deductive reasoning here. If we didn't have one of those three things, so let's say you have the light and you have your eyes, but you don't have any water vapor in the air, no rainbow. There's still light, there's still vision, there's still eyes, there's no rainbow. Let's say you have the water vapor in the air, as we do right now, you know, there's a lot of mist, a lot of mist around here, a lot of water vapor in the air, and I have my eyes, but there's no rainbow. Why is there no rainbow? because there's not enough light. The light is behind the clouds, so there's no rainbow. Now, here's the, here's the one that'll really bake you a noodle, okay? If there is the, the light source and the water vapor, but there's nobody around, or everybody around has their eyes closed, or everybody around is looking in a different direction, is there still a rainbow there? considering the light is being, and the, let's say the conditions are perfect for a rainbow to exist. The conditions are perfect. It's just finished raining. There's the perfect amount of moisture in the air and the, the sun is in exactly the right position for a rainbow to occur. However, there is no being, animal, person, or recording equipment that is capable of picking up the spectrum of light. They're either looking away, they're simply not there, or they all have their eyes closed, or they're all asleep. Is there still a rainbow? Now that's gonna bake your noodle a little bit, so this is almost like a Zen koan. Really consider that, really consider that. Now that alone is enough to, to understand how the Maya operates to understand how the matrix works. That alone is enough. That's why that single koan can be enough to just awaken some disciples and students. Now, let's go further. So let's say, for whatever reason, you can see the rainbow clearly, but you want to understand that the rainbow is an illusion. And let's use this, the rainbow now as an analogy. So you want to see clearly that the Maya that the matrix is an illusion and you really want to fully experience this. So how do we get rid of the rainbow? Not that anybody would ever want to, because why would you want to really? But let's say we're doing that as an exercise. Now we could either get rid of the water vapor or we could get rid of the sun. Good luck with that. <laughs> okay. 
So that's why it's not the, the aim of awakening, the aim of enlightenment, the aim of the spiritual practice is not to destroy the illusion because that would be like trying to destroy the sun or removing water vapor from the air. It doesn't work like that. You don't destroy that. But if we wanted to cease seeing the rainbow, all we would have to do is close our eyes or look in a different direction. Now, please, fully go into this. Understand this, because your mind is going to try and go somewhere else now. <laughs> your mind doesn't like this talk because it knows what's coming, right? So that's a clue in itself that this is powerful. Ask yourself, if the rainbow's in the sky and you close your eyes, is the rainbow still there, but you're not looking at it, or has the rainbow vanished? The rainbow is in the sky, and you close your eyes. You have to understand, when your eyes are closed, the rainbow is no longer there. The light is there, the water vapor is there, but you have closed your eyes, or you've turned in a different direction. And the rainbow is no longer there. Now if you reopen your eyes and turn back to it, the rainbow is right where you left it. <laughs> right where you left it. So it appears, to all intents and purposes, the, the appearance is that there is a solid thing called a rainbow in the sky. You turn away. It, so this is what happens, right? So say the rainbow's up there over there, okay, there it is, I close my eyes and turn away, but in my mind, in my brain, I'm thinking there's a, still a rainbow there. There's still a rainbow there, I'm just not looking at it. But that is not true. That is not the truth. That is not the reality of the situation. The reality of the situation is, there is a rainbow there because I'm looking at it. Right? Rainbow there because I'm looking at it. I close my eyes and turn away, there's nothing there anymore it's vanished. So how do we apply this to our spiritual practice and use that understanding to burn through this spiritual blockage? Well, understand that the Maya is the entire world and universe that you perceive in your experience. Your entire experience of life is the Maya. Bear with me. If you know where I'm going with this, you're already there, okay? If you, know, if, you, if you know where I'm going with this, then you're already there, but bear with me. So that's why in many spiritual practices, we speak of abiding as the consciousness itself. The pure consciousness is, is analogous to and is akin to closing your eyes and the rainbow disappearing. If you cease, cease paying attention to your thoughts, feelings, your own personal narrative, your own personal story, your own emotions, even your own bodily sensations, if you cease paying attention to them in exactly the same way as when we close our eyes, the rainbow disappears, you cease paying attention to the content of experience and the content of experience vanishes. All of your concepts about the universe is a big, vast, open, empty thing and we're all just matter that's kind of crashing around into each other and, you know, we're a kind of uh, an evolved ape kind of creature or that's if you're in the scientific sort of perspective as I was. Or, or maybe you have a different sort of understanding framework and conceptualization of the universe. If you cease paying attention to that and stop telling yourself the story and cease believing, cease your investment in believing the concepts and you withdraw your attention, this is the crucial thing. This is why attention is always mentioned in any spiritual practice, in any meditative practice. Focus your attention either elsewhere so that you're no longer paying attention to the illusion, right? Or 
simply withdraw attention back into itself. Allow awareness to sink back into its source. Awareness itself without extending towards anything. Because that's what attention means. Attention comes from the Latin attendere, meaning to stretch towards. So rather than stretching towards something, we keep ourselves fully here. We withdraw attention and allow it to rest within its own source, allowing consciousness to rest within its own heart. Also, the clues are in language. Okay, this, this one just came to mind there. Attention, attention meaning to pay attention to something, and a tension, meaning, you know, tension when something is tense, when something is tight, a tension. So our attention, which is akin to the audience watching the woman being cut in half on stage and she's screaming and everyone's like, oh, their attention, they are tense. There is tension because they're being, they're extending their awareness towards the illusion. Cease. You've seen the illusion now. You've understood how it works. That's the trick. I've just explained how the trick works. Now that you know that, you can cease paying attention to the trick on stage. It's boring. Get up out of the audience and leave. You don't even have to stand up and tell everyone how the trick is done. You don't have to do that. Just stand up and leave. I, sorry, I've seen this trick before. <laughs> so now you don't even have to worry about future lifetimes. Because if somebody gives you a ticket to come see the show of the woman being sawed in half on stage, you could go, sorry, I know how that trick's done. It won't be interesting to me anymore. I just liberated you from all future lifetimes now, because now you know how the trick is done. You don't want to come back and see the same trick again. You know how it's done, so it's boring. So, let's really nail this down. Not that there's anything to nail it into, like nailing into thin air. So then, we understand this, this reality, as we experience it, feels incredibly real. And we could say, when I, I feel pain when I get hurt, I can feel the solid reality. My emotions feel very real, my thoughts feel very real. Absolutely. They are real in the same way that a rainbow is real. When you see a rainbow, nobody could doubt that you see a rainbow. Nobody can tell you you're not seeing a rainbow. Absolutely, you are. And absolutely, your, your feelings are real. Your thoughts are real. Everything is real in the same way that the rainbow is real. It's a real illusion. That's as far as we can go. So to see this clearly, how do we withdraw our attention away from this illusion? You cease paying attention to it. Does that sound too simple? Maybe, but it is that simple. The only reason that sounds difficult is because for your entire life you have been engaging in the habit of believing in the illusion. The entire world culture, your whole conditioning, your whole upbringing in your entire life has most likely been subjected to this investment this firm belief, through no fault of your own, the entire world culture is invested in the illusion and you've probably invested in the illusion quite a lot too. I mean, you've spent a lot of time, energy and money invested in this illusion, so you don't want to give it up too easily. And one of the objections of the mind is to say, 
but how can I stop believing in the illusion? That's just the mind. It's just another thought. So it's just another colour of the rainbow. So any thought, any mind objection to this now is, uh-oh, SpaghettiOs, part of the rainbow. It's just another line of colour on the rainbow. It's all part of the illusion, all of it. Even your objections, even everything that would, yeah, but what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? All of the blockages, everything, all of it, all of it, all of it, the whole thing, all of it, everything. Withdraw your attention from all of it. But that's difficult. That's just another thought. Don't engage with that thought. Just don't engage with any of it. Any of it. All of it. The whole thing. Just don't engage. But I can feel this. I can feel that. I can see this. I can see that. That is akin to just... But the rainbow must be real because I can see red. Yeah, well, don't engage with the red. Yeah, but what about yellow? Don't engage with yellow. Yeah, but what about pink? Don't engage with pink. Yeah, but what about green? Yeah, but don't worry about green. Yeah, but what about indigo? <laughs> don't worry about indigo. What about purple? Don't worry about purple. Just, just don't pay attention to any of it. Just close your eyes completely to the whole thing. That whole rainbow that's up there? Yeah, but what about this? What about that? What about this? What about the fact I can see it? What about this? Just close your eyes and turn in a different direction. That is how you experience the illusion vanishing. Once you've experienced the illusion vanishing and knowing what's happening when it vanishes, there we go. There can be no further questions and the world can no longer trouble you in the same way again. Real things can happen, but there are, we are, you understand now it's illusory. I mean, to get, I mean, the, the clues are everywhere. You might say it's very difficult to, if, if, if I completely withdrew all of my attention, how do I know that everything just vanishes and disappears? How can we say that? Because it appears to, to remain even if, <laughs> I'm not saying physically close your eyes, but everything appears to remain even if I'm in meditation. But you see this clearly every single night when you go to sleep. When you finally drift off into sleep, the world vanishes you, and you experience no time passes until you wake up again. You wake up and you're like, oh, that was weird. Where, where have I just been for that whole time? But we overlook this. But where does the world go when you're asleep? Where does your narrative go when you sleep? Where does the entire illusory reality go when you sleep? This is a clue. This is, so this happens every night anyway. Only you are doing this now in the waking state. It may take some practice and discipline. After all, we are trying to move on from many decades of habits here. So it, yes, it can be, it can take some practice and discipline and ultimately some courage as well. There was that character in the Matrix who wanted to get put back in. He didn't like it on the other side. He wanted to get back in said, if, if I'd have known what was on the other side, I'd have never escaped this illusion. You know, that does happen. So I'm just explaining the illusion clearly. What you do with that really is kind of up to you. But if that is a spiritual blockage for you, how do I see the illusion clearly? Well, there it is. It is like waking up from a nightmare, like waking up from the worst nightmare you've ever had. And the relief is enormous and profound. This is why it's spoken of as enlightenment. It's the lightening of everything. When you awaken, and that's also why it's called awakening, because you awaken from the nightmare. <laughs> when you wake up from a nightmare, the relief you feel is because you've recognized the monsters weren't real ever. They were never real. That's the relief. Let's say you were getting chased by a monster in a nightmare and you wake up. You don't think, oh good, I am now safe from a real monster. When you wake up, you feel relief because you go, oh, that's a relief. 
There were no monsters. I was just dreaming. There were no monsters. You were just dreaming. That whole narrative in your head. Nope. Don't worry about it. Just a dream. The whole thing. A real dream. You ex in a nightmare, you experience real fear. Absolutely. And I'm not, I'm not trying to, like, I'm not trying to mock anyone for experiencing fear in a nightmare. Of course you're going to feel fear in a nightmare. Of course you are. I'm not, I'm not trying to dismiss that fear. I'm not trying to dismiss the suffering. That, that's a common trap in spirituality, is dismissing people's suffering. The suffering was very, very real. Just as the, the fear and the suffering you feel in a nightmare is real. It's only once you wake up that you are liberated from that suffering. And the liberation from that suffering is the result of seeing the illusion clearly. The monsters were not real. So sometimes we hold on to the illusion because in our narrative that we have in our mind, the personal story, the story of me, has contained so much suffering and perhaps we have the inner child that doesn't want to let go of that just yet because the inner child doesn't want to be dismissed and needs to be heard and needs to be seen. And so the, the individual body mind needs to be heard and needs to be seen. So we're not dismissing that the suffering has happened that your pain has happened, but instead it's a, a, a waking up from, hey, like if you know, if somebody you love is having a nightmare and you can hear them and they're screaming and they're shouting and they're, you wake them up. That's the kindest thing to do. The kindest thing to do is gently wake them up. You don't jump into the nightmare and start fighting the monsters for them. It, even if you could, that wouldn't work. The, the kindest thing to do is just to gently wake somebody up and listen to what they, you know, that then you get that weird in-between state just when you've woken up from a nightmare and you're in that weird kind of still fuzzy state where you're like, you're still kind of feeling the residue. You're still feeling the after effect of the nightmare. If you've ever woken somebody up who's had a nightmare, they're not very well for a little while. I'm going into a different metaphor now. I shouldn't mix my metaphors, but that, that's worth understanding. Maybe that's a, that's a video for another time. We're staying with the rainbow thing for this one. So, hopefully that's given you some pointings on the nature of the illusory reality, on the nature of how illusions work and how to see through it clearly. It's actually by withdrawing the attention and that's how the illusion vanishes. It just disappears. I mean, in that analogy, when we close our eyes, the rainbow disappears, but the water vapor and the light is still there. So whatever it is that is happening, it, the, the, there's something is happening, I guess. But incidentally, how interesting it is that scientists have never actually found matter. No matter how, how much we, how closely we look into something and break something apart, we got down to atoms, but then we asked, what are atoms made of? And they said, oh, well, it's made of these like positrons and electrons. And it's like, oh, okay, but what are they made of? We go even deeper. Well, it's like string theory, strings and planks. And then it's like, yeah, but what about, what are they made of? And it's like, oh, well, it's quantum mechanics. And then it's like, but then what's that made of? It's just going to go, it's a rabbit hole that just goes further and further. And they never actually find something solid. Never. So what is actually here, the light and the water vapor of reality, the actual substance, the matter of reality, is ultimately just space. That's it. When we remove the faculties to, because our, our mind refracts our experience. The mind refracts the perception and creates the multiplicity and the diversity that we see on earth and in the universe. It, that's the refraction. Your whole life in your perception is the act of the light refracting. 
But ultimately, there's nothing there. It's just space. The mind interprets what's happening and creates a narrative out of it. So the withdrawing of attention from that narrative and the universe as we understand it vanishes. What remains, we're never going to know. Never. Scientists won't ever be able to find it out and uh, nobody will ever be able to tell you in words. It just has to be experienced directly and I truly hope that I've brought you maybe a slight, close, a slight step closer to that today. Incidentally, I find it fascinating how the universe breathes inspiration, which is from the Latin inspirare, for, um, for breathing into the universe through inspirare. The universe breathes into inspiration, the creativity. Shout out to beautiful Aubrey, by the way. I was speaking about that on, um, on Instagram. But... Um, so the light, the, the light of the universe, inspirare, breathes into, breathes into our narratives, our folk tales, our understanding, which is why we get movies like The Matrix. The Matrix, Truman Show, Shutter Island, Groundhog Day. These are all movies, I'm sure, list them in the comments. There are so many movies like it that have entered our cultural psyche and it's the universe breathing this inspirare, inspiration, as a clue for us to wake up to the reality. There is a reason that the Matrix has had a resurgence in interest and popularity recently. The Matrix, Truman Show, Shutter Island, Groundhog Day, there are many, many like it. Um, because they show us our true nature through narrative and storytelling. And so, the rainbow is actually a very prominent symbol. And let's think about why do we say there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow when you'll never actually find the end of the rainbow. That's the point. That's what it's trying to tell you. That's what it's trying to tell you with that folklore. The pot of gold at the end of the rainbow or being granted a wish. There's a leprechaun at the end of the rainbow and, and he will grant you a wish. That's because if you search deeply enough into the rainbow, if you search deeply enough into the illusion, you find there's no illusion there, and that is the gold. That's the treasure. That's the wish. That is what will give you everything your heart desires. Because it turns out you never wanted the gold. You never wanted the wish. All you ever wanted was to see the illusion clearly. That's all you ever wanted. Also in many traditions, it is spoke of something called the rainbow body in the Tibetan Buddhist tradition. When somebody achieves enlightenment, it is said their body evaporates in a flash of light that manifests as rainbows. And when somebody attains enlightenment, rainbows appear. So that's also spoken of in, our, in, our, in folklore and in tales. The rainbow bridge in Norse mythology. The rainbow bridge. We've all seen Thor, right? But in Norse ancient Viking mythology, they speak of the rainbow being a bridge between the physical world and the gods, the realm of the gods. Why? Because the clue is in the symbol. The clue is in the symbol of the rainbow. It is the bridge that connects the physical world to the divine world. It's not physically a bridge. What, is, what was hidden there, the hidden meaning, the hidden message, is that if you tried to walk on the bridge, you'd fall straight through it. Why? Because it's an illusion. So, the bridge between the physical world and the divine world is illusory. They're all the same world. Once you see the illusion clearly, that is when you enter the realm of the divine. And lastly, in the biblical tradition, God gave us the symbol of the rainbow as a sign of his promise that he will never flood the world again. Because he flooded the world and it was only Noah that built the ark and, and escaped the flood. Now, what if that flood is a metaphor and an analogy for our the destruction in our lives and the, the dark night of the soul that we endure on the spiritual path. 
being lost, being completely, being tied up in the physical drowning, in the physical matter of the apparent illusory world. And upon seeing the rainbow, seeing the rainbow clearly, it is the divine promise that the world shall never be flooded again. Which is to say, once the illusion is seen, you cannot suffer in the same way ever again. Problems will still happen. Agent Smith will still show up. <laughs> there will still be difficulties and troubles. You will still have a life to live and it will be beautiful. And there will be troubles, there will be struggles, there will be ups and downs. But the difference now is that you have seen the illusion clearly. And the divine shall never flood the world again. Culturally, understand that the rainbow is light refracted. And so all of these colours that we see in the rainbow technically is light divided. But I won't go into that any further. So, thank you so, so much for watching. I know that's been a long one and I know that's probably a lot to take in. I always try to make it as simple and direct and clear as possible. It might take a little bit of like getting through it. If you need clarification on anything, please let me know. As always, don't forget to hit that illusory like and subscribe button, but I know people don't like me mentioning that, so I won't mention it. <laughs> and um, I do have channel memberships now available. If you want to gain access to my exclusive guided meditations and talks that I can put up ad-free because the membership has a small monthly subscription, then you can access that by joining the channel membership and it really supports me. It really helps me out. Obviously, I'm trying to come into a place where I can put more time into this, take this more from part time into full time, which means I can produce more of these videos, upgrade all of my equipment, which I know is not the best and um, just put more time and resources into it. Or if you just want to support me and say thanks, just please consider uh, joining the old membership there. But yeah, that's the spiritual bleach for today. Thank you so, so much for listening, everyone. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I hope everyone's well out there. I hope you're doing good. I know it's, everything's a bit tumultuous at the moment, right? In the, in the Maya. And um, so I just hope everyone's doing well. You're probably feeling it. You're feeling that the spiritual energies are shifting and they really are. But um, stay, Stay disciplined in your practice, stay firm in your practice and don't buy into anything too much and you will be just fine. You will be on the arc that overcomes the flood. Yes, you will. Thank you. Take care, be well, and stay present.